on January 2nd, I thought it would kind of be, uh, before I just jump into a message to kind of give a little quick review of last year before we put 2021 to bed, ready to say goodbye to 2021. A number of things have happened in and around our country in this last year. COVID fears and panic have swept across the world, including the newest variant, the Omicold, I mean, the Omicron. Uh, the world's leading cause of death in the world it wasn't heart disease or cancer, or strokes, diabetes, murder. It was abortion, the number one killer in the world, 43 million murdered in 2021. Trans insanity this year. Uh, a lot of uh, world's records in athletic events are held in women's sports by biological men. In 2021, racial animosity, violence, crime, corruption running rampant in our cities. We've weathered, gotten through an intensely contentious election. Runaway inflation, gas prices we're experiencing right now. The church at large is still dealing with the effects, the lockdowns, the ramification of all uh, the COVID things. That's just to name some. And it'll be good to have 2021 in the rearview mirror. But in spite of all those seemingly bad headlines, there's also a rising hunger in this country and churches for what's holy, for what's true, a real, a real hunger for the presence of the living God amongst his people again. We've seen it all around us, and there's no way that we could be just spectators, bystanders. We're right in the middle of it all. Last year here at Cross Life, we've impacted hundreds of people here at Cross Life Church together. We're building bridges here at Cross Life Church, bridges of love, understanding of unity in the Lord. And the Lord is calling us higher, to so a step higher in 2022 in Cross Life. Cross Life Church is stoking the flames of revival here in Portsmouth, in the state of Virginia, in the nation. And prayerfully, a great awakening can be just ahead of us here in this country. And we can't let up now in bringing the truth and the light into the darkness of this world. John 1, 5 declares this, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. Amen. Do you remember playing hide and seek as a kid? Do you remember that? All right, where well, we cover our eyes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. That's kind of like 2022. It's here, all right? It's here finally, the new year. Now, thinking caps are on. Can you remember Pastor Rick's Christmas Eve message? I know it was last year. It seemed like a long time ago. And it was a bit of kind of like an outer space type of uh, perspective on the incarnation of Jesus, who came to tabernacle amongst us. Can you remember? Because it kind of gave the, me the idea of this message this morning. Uh, after our candlelight service here at Cross Life, Kathy, Russ, and myself, we went down to the oceanfront for uh, a midnight candlelight service. And it was nice. And when I got home, it was getting late. It might have been one or two, and I was sitting in the rocking chair in my den, you know, just thinking about Pastor Rick's message and the awesomeness of the universe that our God has created. And for some reason, I started thinking about the universe and some interesting things that popped into my head, and I have a lot of sticky pads laying around. And I started writing some ideas down. And it, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do with them at the time. But when I started to think about it, when Rick asked me Tuesday afternoon if I could speak this morning, he's like, 
I know what I'm going to talk about. And I found my notes from Christmas Eve. And uh, it's some mind-numbing things about the, the world that God has created. And this morning, I'd like to continue along in that cosmos theme and mix in with the universe some interesting facts, some mind-numbing mathematics. Anybody good at math? Because right, there's some jaw-dropping numbers when you start to consider God's creation. And this morning, uh, I'd like to offer you just, you know, some sermons like three points, five points, this one, just one. An offer to you this morning, just one point, just one word, actually, that could possibly make 2022 your best year ever in the Lord. you got to listen carefully. It's kind of like a one-word New Year's resolution. In a New Year's resolution kind of way, this is what the Bible says in Proverbs 19.21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. That's kind of similar to an old Yiddish proverb, man tracht und God lacht, man plans and God laughs. But the Bible also says in Proverbs, and it's speaking about wisdom now, but that's not the word. Listen to what God says about this, Proverbs 2, verses 1 to 6. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding... Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Now hang in there. This kind of like cryptic beginning is going to make sense at the end, the very end of this message. And perhaps you could even figure out that one word uh, along the way. Uh, when I thought about the message on Tuesday, I got a bunch of slides, so it would be interesting to see. You know, uh, Jonathan does a great job of preparing the slides, and he got them like late last night of uh, putting these things uh, into the order. Uh, the first slide is a key verse. Genesis 1, verse 3. Now, this verse is going to be key to the message. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, this is called in theological terms the divine imperative, the divine fiat. The words, let there be God created the universe from nothing. There was nothing. It wasn't like Michelangelo making a sculpture uh, out of a big hunk of marble or granite. That was already there. God created everything. They call it ex nihilo, out of nothing. He spoke, let there be. And it was by the power of his words. Now, that's in direct uh, conflict to what a lot of people believe. They believe that matter is eternal. If you remember back uh, years ago to that PBS show called Cosmos with Carl Sagan, in the beginning, the opening, it was kind of like the, the secular worldview. The cosmos is all there is, all there was, and all there ever will be. Now, that's in direct Conflict with what the Word of God says. The Word of God says He spoke and He brought all things into being. Now, some fun sun facts. God said, let there be light, and there was light. So some fun uh, sun facts this morning. The sun is almost a perfect sphere. The sun is huge. One million Earths can fit inside the sun. If the sun were as big as your front door of your house, the Earth would be the size of a nickel. 
the sun is big, but the sun is also tiny when you compare it to other stars in the universe. The sun is hot. It's 27 million degrees at its core. And it's 10,000 degrees on its surface. I had a couple of students a while ago uh, who told me they had it all planned out, how they were going to travel to the sun one day. Now, I didn't want to squash these guys' dreams. But I said, hey, hey, fellas, it's impossible to go to the sun. You can't go to the sun. It's too hot. You'll burn up. And they said, coach, we got that all figured out. We're going to go at night. <laughs> but the sun is really, really hot. The sun is really bright. It's the brightest object in the Earth's sky. Did you know that the, the sun wasn't a solid mass? It doesn't have easily identifiable borders like a rocky planet like the Earth. It's made up of layers and layers and layers of hydrogen and helium. Now, light comes from the atom, atoms in the core that are undergoing nuclear fusion. And the light eventually bursts past the sun's surface into the solar atmosphere, and then it streams out throughout the solar system and illuminates our solar system. Now, in the light, pun intended, of Genesis 1, verse 3, when God said, I want, uh, let there be light, and there was light, I want to ask you a deep question, a, qu a pondering question. Why? Why does light pour forth and illuminate our world? Why? And the next slide will give you the answer to that. Why does light pour forth and illuminate our world? Because God said and light obeyed. Now, church, you're going to have to help me on this one because it's going to turn into like kind of a call and response. I know this message is different. Uh, it's going to be a call and response. What does this say, church? That's all you got? <laughs> say it one more time with feeling. What does it say, church? God said it and light obeyed. Good. All right. Now, how many of you know this morning, we're getting into some uh, physics here, understand and know the speed of light? All right, the speed of light, this is, this is like amazing. The speed of light travels at 186,000 miles a second. But does anybody here know why light travels at 186,000 miles per second? Now, just to give you a, a pretty fast, just to give you a little understanding of just how fast that is. All right, the Earth. All right, the Earth. The third rock from the Sun. It's ninety-three million miles away from the Sun. The Earth is twenty-five thousand miles in circumference. Now, light traveling at 186,000 miles per second, I will travel or surround the earth seven times in one second. I mean, it's like amazing. Do you know why? Now I'm going to give you the answer again. And then it's going to be your responsibility all right, to remember the answer and then re uh, respond back to me. It's kind of like a call and response. All right, why does light surround the earth seven times in one second? Why? And <laughs> light obeyed. All right, good. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, let there be light, and light obeyed at 186,000 miles per Per second. Now, light travels at 186,000 miles per second because, say it with me now, God said it and light obeyed. Now, to get how far light travels in one minute, all right, simple. 
you multiply 186,000 times 60. Everybody good at math? <laughs> now, light travels in one minute. All right, here's the answer coming up. 11,160,000 miles in one minute. 11,160,000 miles in one minute. And it has been doing it that way ever since Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Church, why does light travel at 11,160,000 miles a minute? And light obeyed. Now, to get how far light travels in one hour, I was kind of bored sitting in that rocking chair Christmas Eve. To get how far light travels in one hour, you would multiply 11,160,000 times 60. Light travels in one hour 669,600,000 miles in an hour. Now, why does light travel 669,600,000 miles in an hour? God said it, and light obeyed. You want to get how far light travels in a day? And remember now that light has been traveling 669,600,000 miles an hour since Genesis 1-3. Now, I've never heard light say, well, I don't know if I should continue to be disobedient because people might misunderstand me. To get how far light travels in one day, you would multiply 669,600,000 times 24. Light travels in one day 16,700,400,000 miles in one day. And it's been doing that every day since Genesis 1 Three, And you know what's so amazing? I've never heard light say, you know, i got to slow down a little bit because I'm tired. It hasn't said that. Why does light travel 16 billion, 70 million, 400,000 miles in one day? God said it and light obeyed. If you want to get how far light travels in one year, you multiply 16,070,400,000 times 365. Now, why does light travel? Oh, that comes out to be light traveling in one year. 5 trillion, 865 billion, 696 million miles in a year. Now, why does light travel 5 trillion? 865 billion, 696 million miles in one year? Can you tell me why? God said it and light obeyed. Now, I've never heard light say, I don't know if, if I could continue doing this because people might misunderstand me and think that it's all about me. So I better slow down and be like everyone else. You know, they might misunderstand me uh, so much they might even lock me up. Do you understand that according to Genesis 1, 3 to verse 5, it says this, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning, the first day. As I further thought and contemplated, I thought of the planets that Rick talked about. This is our solar system. These are our planets. Do you remember back from the days of junior high or middle school science? Do you know all your planets? Do you know that light traveling at 186,000 miles to a second will make the 36 uh, million mile journey to Mercury, that's the closest planet to the sun, in just 3.2 minutes. 36 million miles. 
in just 3.2 minutes. 68 million miles to Venus in just six minutes. 93 million miles to Earth in eight minutes and 20 seconds. 142 million miles to Mars in 13 minutes. 484 million miles to Jupiter in 43 minutes. 891 million miles to Saturn in an hour and a half. 1.8 billion miles to Uranus in 2.7 hours. 2.8 billion miles to Neptune in just four hours. And finally, 3.7 billion miles to Pluto, which might not even be a planet anymore, in five and a half hours. It's kind of like jaw-dropping when you think about it. Vast, vast amounts of space. Now, can anybody tell me why light, traveling at 186,000 miles per second, will flood our solar system, illuminating it in just five and a half hours? Why? God said it, and light obeyed. And it's been illuminating the universe, the solar system, every day since Genesis 1-3. Now, the nearest star to our star is something called Alpha Centauri. It's the nearest star to the sun. Now, get that. It's 26 trillion. 395 billion, 632 million miles away from the sun. Now, the numbers, when you think about these, they become so vast, and they're really uncumbersome, unwieldy, that the scientists, they reduce this thing to something called a light year. Remember, Alpha Centauri, the closest star to our star, 26 trillion, 395 billion, 632 million miles from us, or 4.5 light years. Seems kind of easier. Do you remember what a light year is? A light year is how many miles light travels in one year. It's about 6 trillion miles in that year. Now, traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, it will take you four and a half years to get from the sun all the way to Alpha Centauri. Can anybody tell me why light travels in four and a half years at 186,000 miles per second, going 26 trillion, 395 billion, 632 million miles? Why? God said it and light obeyed. Now, Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, obey my commandments. And if God said it and light obeyed, we'd better resolve to do the same in 2022. Have you figured out what that one word, the key word of this message is? Obey. Obey. Excellent. Excellent. Let's bow for prayer.